So we did review this with our uh, students today. We called down all of the seniors uh, as well as the juniors who are going to be graduating early. And we went through this with any kids that were in the building during third block today. So they are familiar with this as well. And I told them we would be sharing. So our assembly overview, one of the things that I want to share with you is our senior webpage and how to get there because this has the important you know, you one. to the seniors and to the graduates. Um, That's only one. Now until graduation. Um, top of the school is an event that coming up for the seniors, uh, where uh, it used to be Mr. Upper Darby, but we're going to be voting on top royal. Uh, Work-based learning is something for the students in the class of 2022 who are seniors that they have to complete. Uh, yearbook ordering, cap and gown ordering, post-secondary pride day, uh, senior prom, after prom, graduation rehearsal, and graduation. So this is the senior webpage, and you can see here, um, if you go to the high school page and you go to the bar over here, you'll see 2021, 2022 senior information. And you can see below that in the drop down, it covers the senior center staff, graduation, prom. So a lot of the information that I've been putting out in emails and that Mr. Bendit would be sharing with the juniors we're constantly uploading it into this part of the senior webpage so that everything's there live in the moment uh, for the information for everybody. I'm gonna try and move fairly quickly through the dates that are coming up. One of the points that I made to everybody today is the fact that we don't have much time left, you know, and the time goes so quickly. Um, next week, we have our event called Top Royal that will be here in the auditorium at 6 p.m., all of the money as part of Top Royal benefits the after prom. So after the senior prom, uh, the students are able to come back here for a celebration. The next date is obviously very important. That is the end of this marking period. So March 25th, we really only have like two weeks left in this marking period. I was impressing upon the students today to make sure you get your grades where you want them to be to end this marking period because once that grade goes in, you're gonna be averaging your quarter four grade with that grade for your final grade. And for some students that might be the, you know, a dependent factor on whether they're able to graduate with us at, at the Leah Kors Center at the, in June. Um, if you think about it, the end of January is the time that this quarter started until now and think about how far away that seems. That seems like it was just yesterday that we were at the end of January. The same amount of time is gonna be quarter four and it's gonna be June. We have spring break, 411 to 415. Uh, we have UD's Got Talent, which is a talent show for all of the students in the building to participate in. They just have to try out. Important dates that are coming up in May are AP exams, Post-secondary Pride Day is where we call the seniors down and we celebrate whatever their next step in life is going to, going to be. Um, we, cel you know, we celebrate it all. So if a student's going to be going into the military, into the Marines, you know, they'll go. be able to hold up the USMC, take a picture of them and celebrate them in the Performing Arts Center. We'll be calling students down by alphabet. Prom tickets go on sale. Basically, prom tickets for senior prom will be on sale through the month of May. The 20th will be uh, our last date. I'm currently working on producing the cost of the prom ticket. We just sent a survey out that's part of this for students to tell us, number one, are you coming to the prom? And number two, are you bringing a guest? If you think about trying to divide the cost of the prom by the number of students that are going that becomes really difficult when we're saying okay we might have 900 kids here if everybody brings a guest who doesn't go to school here now we're at 1800 if people bring a bunch of guests who are part of our class then we're at back to the 900 so we're trying to get a sense of uh, how many people and where we're at and one of the things that we'll have is the number of people that respond out of the entire class so that'll give us an indication of what kind of data we're looking at at this point I told the kids today Try and plan on around $80 for the prom ticket per person. I hope to get it lower than that. That's my goal, but I don't wanna give a price that's too low and not have people be prepared for, for what might come. 
Um, Keystone exams will be running 516 through 523. Seniors don't take Keystone exams, so those students will be reporting to school at 11 o'clock on those days through our testing bell schedule. All of our bell schedules are also on the Upper Darby High School site. Uh, if you just type in Upper Darby High School bell schedules, any of those different days are all on there. On the 23rd of May, we have our National Honor Society induction ceremony here in the pack. Um, the next dates, Going into May, important dates continued. We have Senior Appreciation Day. This is a really exciting day. Students will get their yearbook on this date. And we do like a talent show or something else fun, typically in the Performing Arts Center. And then essentially we'll give everybody their yearbooks and then we'll go outside for a picnic, which really makes for a neat, I don't remember how we did it in my high school, but for everybody to get their yearbooks the same day and kind of have the ability to pass them around at like that celebration and get your friends to sign them and stuff is always pretty cool. And I have uh, some yearbook ordering information to come later in the presentation. School is closed for the contract in service day on the 27th of May and then Memorial Day is that following Monday. It all comes really quick from there. Uh, senior awards night is it's the 2nd of June at 7 p.m. in the pack, and that is for inv invitation only for students who will be awarded scholarships. Important dates in June. The final day for obligations to the Senior Center, uh, Ms. Key had, e had mailed home, physically mailed home paperwork for students that maybe they uh, had a textbook from the first semester that wasn't returned or uh, a lock from ninth grade or things of that nature. All of that stuff was mailed home. So if you didn't get something in the mail indicating that your child owes any, any sum of money, then they, then they wouldn't have an obligation. We will be holding up like kids getting graduation tickets, kids getting prom tickets, things like that based on um, whether or not they have taken care of these financial obligations that may have accrued over the last four years. Final exams are June 3rd through June 8th. And June 8th is the day of our graduation rehearsal. So we're like, basically it's, I think, uh, a Friday, that final start, we come back and that next Wednesday, we're into graduation rehearsal. The prom is that Saturday, 6-4. And then the after prom is in, I would say, I guess the morning of uh, six, five. So the prom will go from seven 30 until 12 o'clock at the Drexel Brook. And then basically we'll be opening the doors here in the high school to allow students to come to the after prom. And that goes until five o'clock in the morning. Then we hit commencement rehearsal on the eighth. This event is mandatory. Students come in at 12 o'clock. One of the reasons that it's mandatory is we practice, practice processing down to the gym. So all the kids will go back to their homerooms. The homeroom teacher will line them up in alphabetical order to prepare them for the procession. We'll walk down to the gym. We'll get everybody down there. We'll talk about the expectations of what's going to happen during the actual graduation ceremony. Then we will recess them back to homeroom where we will give them their cap and gown and tickets and, and the things that they need for graduation. So it's important that all the kids are there because they won't have a cap and gown unless they are there for rehearsal. We need the kids to show up at uh, noon. Um, graduation day, students have to report to the school to be transported to the graduation. When kids come to the school on graduation day, it's at 7.30 a.m. They will report back to that homeroom. Everybody will get, be getting ready. Um, it's kind of a nice time. There's a little bit of downtime that the kids kind of get to hang out with each other kind of one last time a little bit in their homeroom, see your friend in the halls. Teachers are kind of buzzing around, primping and prepping kids, helping that kid with their tie, uh, making sure that they have the correct uh, clothing on and things of that nature. Um, no, they can't carry bags and stuff. So we recommend that people don't bring really anything that morning. I mean, if you have your cell phone in your pocket, I mean, obviously that can be concerning too, right? We don't want phones going off and things like that. You got to shut them down. But, but students have to report here and then they will be transported by bus. Basically, the, what I described in the rehearsal, we will process down to where the gym doors are and we'll go right out the door and those kids will get right on a bus and be driven to Temple.
So this is the first event that's coming up, which is Top Royal. This is uh, next Thursday, the 17th at 6 p.m. We had an event called Mr. Upper Darby, and we would have students that are not a male gender say, hey, I want to be part of Mr. Upper Darby. So we decided, why are we doing that? We're going to call it Top Royal for the class of 2022. And anybody was willing to, or anybody was able to participate regardless of uh, their gender identity. So we have, I think, uh, 12 or 13 people who are going to be, it's kind of a pageant style thing where they dress up in certain things and come out and then they are going to show, show us all their talents. We're going to vote on who wins that. So I'm looking forward to that. Again, all proceeds go to the after prom. Um, ticket sales start tomorrow after school. And then parents and families are able to come, uh, particularly, you know, the kids who might be performing, their parents and families would have to purchase tickets after school. I'll be selling tickets in the main lobby on Friday from three until six, and then the following Monday from three until six. Work-based learning is something that the seniors in the class of 2022 have to do. So this is not, not applicable to students who are juniors who might be graduating early. Um, there are five modules that are part of safe schools. If you're part of the class of 2023, you've been working on your Act 158. This is in the same uh, vector system through safe schools for you to complete these things. As of right now, we've had a little bit less than 300 out of the 900 students completing this. And this is a number that gets reported to the state in terms of that our students have completed it. So we wanna get as many people as possible. We are going to have on March 22nd, 24th and 25th, we've reserved the cafeteria and students who have not completed these modules will be called out of class, brought to the cafeteria and they're gonna sit there until they get this done. So ideally, I hope that they get it done before the 22nd so that they can be in their classes and go through their regular day. I'll be sending out further communications with emails of the students who have and have not completed this. Emails have gone out to the kids. Um, the top part of this is actually part of the emails that I've been sending maybe uh, twice a month. The last one I sent was on the 11th of February. I want to get another one out, but I figured out I would get all this information together. So I will be sending out another comprehensive email that has all of this information and then all of these upcoming events. And you see, we broke it down by counselor group so that we only have like a hundred or so kids in the cafeteria at a time working on this. Yearbook ordering. This has been part of my communications that have gone out um, in those emails. So when uh, you go on to Balfour, I think it's fairly obvious how to go in and, and order the yearbook. One of the things that I did mention to the kids today and is more for, for maybe some of the parents, one of the, the bullets there, I think it's number three, and I didn't have the scroll down, but it was part of the email. If you would like, or you have a friend who owns a business that would be interested in advertising in our yearbook, we are going to have advertisements that are going to be in there and they support the class and they support the cost of the yearbook and, and minimize the cost for the students. So um, if you have anybody who you think would be interested in advertising in, in the yearbook, you can send them directly to me and in my communications that will go out, this information will be there as well. So maybe you can just forward them that part of my email and say, hey, you know, this is this is for the kids at the high school if you want to get get a good ad in there. Cap and gown. Cap and gown ordering, I've been sending this information out and I made some phone calls as well to notify everybody that the March 1st deadline has now passed. I think that, that they were about $40 if you had hit the first March 1st deadline. The cost has now gone up and the next deadline is April 1st. If you have not ordered your cap and gown or your child hasn't ordered their cap and gown, it's time to get on this right away. Obviously you can't walk in a graduation ceremony if you don't have a cap and gown. Um, students can use their you know, relatives or people who have graduated in the past, their cap and gown. The one thing that, that they wouldn't have that would be for this year is the, um, I'm trying to think, what's the, the tassel, thank you very much. The tassel from that graduate would have their year on it. The tassel for our graduates would have this year. It is possible to go on to Balfour and only order the tassel for the class of 2022 and students to use, you know, previous uh, cap, gown, and stole 
from other family members. I don't really have any control over that system. Balfour has that system. So if you have any kind of issues with your ordering, I've had some kids where like they put their payment in and it doesn't go through for some reason. Uh, please reach out to, to Miss Emmy Catchell at Balfour. Her information is right here. She's been great. She's answered every question that I have, you know, on the last day before March 1st, I got a call from her. She's like, I've been doing nothing but answering emails and calling kids back and trying to get a hold of people so that they have this information. So. I would really ask, I think the last time I talked to her, we were up to about 790. It's probably even more since then people who have ordered their cap and gown and we're kind of done with it. So that was pretty good out of the thousand kids, but we obviously have a little bit of a uh, little bit of ways to go there. I'd already talked about post-secondary pride day. It's going to be on Friday, May 13th. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to call down ranges of the alphabet those students will come through. We have a bunch of like banners that have, you know, all kinds of different colleges on there, trade schools on there, uh, just different options that are on a backdrop. And then Miss Simone, the building principal will be down here. I'll be down here. Counselors will be down here to kind of jump in, get a picture of the kids, something for them to have and just really celebrate them and what their next step is moving forward. Senior prom is going to be at the Drexelbrook Conference Center from 7.30 to 12 o'clock. I already covered this a little bit. Tickets will be on sale from uh, May 2nd to the 20th. And those will be on sale before and after school only. So if you have a student that has a schedule where they get out early or they come in late, they're gonna have to plan on a day to come up and be able to purchase these prom tickets outside of maybe what their regular school day allows. Um, as I had said before, I'm currently working on creating the cost we can only accept cash. We don't have, I know that in today's society, people are like, hey, Venmo me. Well, we, we don't have the ability to do that. So we are going to have to uh, collect cash um, and no tickets will be sold after 520. We have gotten permission to have students have dates that are outside of the school, you know, in general, I told the kids, and, and I'm getting more and more excited about it, you know, we're making progress on this COVID thing. And where I anticipate being is that by the time we get to June, I'm hoping that we can have a regular graduation without a bunch of safety protocols and a regular prom without a bunch of safety protocols. None of us, right, if anything the last two years has taught us, none of us can know what's going to happen two and three months from now. So if things revert back, if Philadelphia says, hey, we have this sort of mandate or Temple says we have this sort of mandate, then obviously we'll be putting those safety protocols in place. If Drexelbrook says, hey, that's great. You Upper Darby have a certain mandate in terms of your safety, but we have our own, we would have to follow their safety protocols and mandates. So again, I'm really hoping we get there and you know everything keeps rolling along in a positive way. So one of the big things that happened uh, or happens at times at prom is we do cut off that students need to be in the doors by 830. Okay. So please, please, please. And I pled with the kids today. Don't put me in a position. Don't put another administrator in a position where you're showing up at after 830 and we're not going to allow you in to the senior prom. You got to get there on time or early so that you can be admitted before 830. Okay, uh, students and guests must have a photo ID. They will use that to purchase tickets. We need to know who's coming. There's a permission slip. If students are taking people who are outside of our school district for them to take to their school and get filled out, we do not admit anybody 21 or over. Okay, it just creates a whole other problem for us in terms of um, you know, what, what those folks are able to do that we, we are not going to say is acceptable at a high school prom. Okay. Um, police and security will be present. We changed up. We used to have demerits this year. We have Royal points. Students need to have 85 Royal points to purchase a ticket. They also need 85 Royal points to actually go to the prom. In other words, if you buy a ticket in May and then you go off the rails and do something where you start losing a bunch of Royal points, it's possible that although you were able to and eligible at the time you purchased your ticket, you will no longer be eligible 
based on some bad decisions that you had made. So we, we intend to hold students accountable for that. There is a process for getting points back as well. Um, you can see your child's Royal points live in the system. It gets updated every week. If you just go to their classwork grades and home access center, there's actually where it says like class of 2022 or class of 2023, there's a grade that's in there. That is the student's Royal points and where they currently stand. I had mentioned earlier about the prom interest survey. So we're trying to collect data on how many people intend to uh, participate in the senior prom and whether or not they intend to bring somebody to the senior prom who is not a student who I need to include in the numbers. This is a QR code. If you have a QR reader, you can jump in. There's a link below it as well. I intend to share this entire presentation out with everybody in the class and Mr. Bendit will be sharing it out with everybody in the junior class that is an early graduate so that you guys can click through this stuff later. The after prom. This is a great event. Um, I'm gonna skip to the, to the end of this slide. This is a great event because of parents on the home and school team in this school district who have worked very tirelessly to make this a great event for our kids and to hopefully create right a safe environment following the prom for kids to go and have fun in a safe place where we're keeping our children safe please if you can donate any of your time to helping out mr steve sardi he became our home and school president his his email i included in here below you know, I talked to him about the, um, the top Royal event that we're going to have. And especially, I would say, if you have children that are younger than your senior or junior who might be graduating, get involved with these guys. They have meetings once a month and they really do great things for the school district and for the children in the school district. You know, one of the things that had come up the other day, I had a parent reach out to me and they said, hey, I would like to purchase a, a, a cap and gown for a student who may not be able to do that. Great start, right? I can't, as, a, as the school district, like collect their money and then like give it to a family, right? There's just, there's things that the home and school group can do that will help our kids and fundraise in ways that I can't, that I'm limited as a district. Parent organizations can operate outside of some of the guidelines and, and really do things to help in other places where we can. So I, again, I just can't say enough, please, if you can donate any of your time, I, I know that Mr. Sardi would appreciate it and, it and it builds our community right even more importantly. So back to the after prom, it goes from 12 a.m. until five o'clock in the morning. There'll be different activities, games set up for the kids to do. Um, there's usually like a little nap place as well, as you can imagine. I think that's where I'm gonna try and spend most of my time. Um, all students must enter by 115 and they must remain here. And that's for your peace of mind as a parent, right? We don't want kids that are saying like, hey, mom, I'll be at the after prom until five o'clock. And then they're like, eh, two, let's get out of here and go do something else. And now you think they're with us. So that's, that's the whole thing about them remaining in here is that again, we wanna keep everybody safe. And as it says, there is no extra cost for the prom ticket, for the after prom ticket. Okay, so students can attend at no cost. So now we're jumping back into commencement rehearsal. This is June 8th, which right now is the day before graduation, right? So students must be here. They must arrive in their homeroom by 1150 because we're gonna process down to the gym at 12 o'clock. Attendance is mandatory to participate in actual graduation. Seniors are encouraged to wear their senior shirts that we had given out in the beginning of the year. Everybody had an opportunity to get a, a free senior shirt this year. I know that some of the kids didn't order them and we did place multiple orders, but we encouraged the kids to be in their senior shirts that day. Students must fulfill all obligations will not be able to participate in the graduation ceremony if we don't take care of that. That's why we really wanted to send that out um, at, the, at the beginning of the month so that we're communicating this in advance. The stuff was mailed home because we know that the emails get to be, you know, some folks are answering their emails, some folks aren't. Um, we're trying to communicate this in every way possible. 
One of the exciting things about rehearsal day, and I mentioned this earlier, is that the kids will be leaving with their cap and gown, with their stole, with their tassel, and with what we plan to be four tickets for the Leah Chorus Center. I didn't even get to this part today, and one of the kids was like, four tickets, that's it? What's up with that? Previously at the tower, we were only able to offer families two tickets. So a big part of the district moving the graduation ceremony to Temple University and to use the Leah Chorus Center is that we can offer more families more of an opportunity to be present at this event. Um, so again, we're intending to, to hand out four tickets to each one of the kids at that time. It's at the Leah Chorus Center. We want to be begin promptly at 11 a.m. Again, four tickets per student. We will be streaming the ceremony so that other family members who, who you know, couldn't make it and be part of the four can still watch. Um, students must be at school by 7.30. Think about it. We got to get here. We got to get everybody ready to go. We got to check everybody out. Then we got to get on a bus and we got to start transporting over 900 to 1,000 students to Temple. Get there. Get everybody set up. Buses will take students directly to the Leah Chorus Center by homeroom. No family transportation will be provided. If you go onto the senior site right now, we created a pamphlet. It's actually going to be mailed home. We just stuffed all the envelopes the other day. Ms. Key, the administrative assistant for the class of 2022, and we have provided the, uh, the junior class as well with the, the brochures, and they're all going to be mailed home to you. They have the information in terms of how to get down there through public transportation and that stuff uh, and parking information. And then that is on our website right now, digital on that senior page that I showed you guys earlier. So that flyer has been made into basically slides and it's all right there in that information as well. So you can access it anytime from anywhere. Um, I, you could even share that right with other family members, you're, you're, you know, aunts and uncle or grandparent who wants to go, you have the flyer, but you have the digital resource to go, hey, check out the flyer, send them the, send them the website, send them the link. Let me just make sure, yes, okay. So um, students are expected to dress and behave for a ceremony of dignity and sophistication. I read this and cited these words a couple of times with the kids when I was kind of asked somewhat silly questions like, can we go barefoot? Um, I said that doesn't meet the sophistication portion of what we're looking for here, guys. Um, students should wear a dress that does not go below, length, below the length of the graduation grant gown, dress slacks, dress shirts, right, tie, dress shoes. Um, I like sneakers as much as anybody. Can't wear sneakers, okay? Can't wear sandals and flip-flops and boots and jeans. If the kids are wearing things that are not appropriate, we're gonna pull them out of homeroom at 7.30 in the morning and go, yo dude, you're not, you, like, where do you have something else? What's going on? They're not really, they don't wanna bring bags to school because if they're bringing bags of stuff, they can't carry them in the ceremony and they're literally gonna be getting on a bus an hour later, hour and a half later, and driving to Temple. So I beg the kids again, please do not put me or another adult in a position where we're telling you, you might not be able to walk in graduation because you really think those Jordans are fly and they look cool. I get you, I like Jordans too, not the day for it. So we need the kids to show up and be ready to go and what they need, because otherwise we're gonna be calling you and putting you in a panic when you're trying to get down to Temple, going, hey, so-and-so's here, they don't have the things that they need, we need you to drive them up here or they're not getting on the bus, all right? Obviously, it's a big ceremony. Parents are not able to bring balloons and noisemakers and things like that into the Leah Chorus Center. They will be taken at the door. We also do not allow parents to bring flowers into the actual ceremony. If you want to bring flowers for your child, I would suggest that you leave them in the car and give them to them afterwards. Um, diplomas will be distributed immediately following the ceremony. So I had the pleasure of going to the Leah Chorus Center with Miss Simone, um, Ms. Palladino, Ms. Pickett, the graduation coordinator. And when you look at the front of the building to the left, there's like a huge ramp that goes into kind of like a loading dock area. And the kids will basically be dropped off right out front. They'll walk down that ramp and we'll line everybody up. We'll process into the ceremony when the ceremony's over. 
will recess back into that same area where all of their homeroom teachers will have tables with their diplomas on the table with their name. The kid shows their name in their hat to show who they are, and the, and the homeroom teacher gives them their diploma. At that point, they're turning around and they're walking up that ramp and they're meeting you guys, their family, to go enjoy the rest of your day and, and whatever you guys have, to, have planned or to do. Um, I would recommend, you know, maybe a, a, a light lunch after that, right? Maybe make some reservations and figure out how to celebrate with your family that day. Um, but at that point, they don't have any commitments to come back here for. You guys have nothing to come back here for. Um, we've reached the end of the line. Ride into the sunset with your family, as I put it today. Um, so it, it's really exciting. It, it's a great time to kind of go back right into that area and the kids are getting their diplomas and they're seeing the kid from the other part of the alphabet they just walked out that they've spent however many years with and giving hugs and then coming up the coming up I just picture them coming up the ramp and meeting all of you so uh just really looking forward to the day so uh we do have a contingency plan that we're trying to put together again my hope and plan is that we are in the Leah Chorus Center in the most normal way possible, celebrating the hard work of, that these kids have put in over you know, 12 and 13 years uh, of their schooling. So, um, however, again, with COVID, something crazy happens. Uh, I, I've been talking with Ms. Simone and some of the other members of the team, and we're just trying to put together any kind of contingency plan as a just in case, but I just can't enforce this enough. We have every intention of being at the Leah Chorus Center and really enjoying this ceremony. Like I said, I got to tour the facility, really cool place, and I'm really looking forward to it. But this, this plan uh, will be communicated out as well. So I told the kids today, no senioritis, right? We got to get there. We got some work to do over the next couple of months. Um, you know, some of the kids I've had conversations, uh, you know, I'll always remember somebody telling me like when you swim halfway across the lake, you don't want to turn around and swim back because if you do it, it just kept going, you would have you met your goal. Well, think about how much further we are than halfway across the lake at this point. You know, we're, we're a fingernail of that 12 years out from getting here to getting to the ultimate goal and getting to graduation. It's no time to let up. It's no time to, to get down. We got we to gotta push through this last leg and we got to get there together. Uh, stay focused, pass the classes. Make sure you're staying out of trouble and good decision-making. The seniors have had a great year this year in all of these areas. We just need it to continue. Any, you know, any misconduct uh, obviously puts people at risk of not walking in graduation, not participating in the prom, and there's not a single person that wants that. Um, the end goal is for us all to be in that room celebrating our graduates in their caps and gowns. So I can take um, a couple of questions for I think the folks here. To be honest with you, folks at home on the Zoom, uh, I feel like the technology and put opening you guys up is, is going to get wonky. So I'm going to ask that you use the link and that you use our QR code. I'll ask Mr. Bendit to leave that up for a while. And then my intention is to gather up the questions and put the answers in one place and put them out with the video of this uh, presentation. So when I send this out, I tr intend to do a little bit more of a comprehensive email with some other information that's in it about the future and where we're headed. Have this presentation linked into it. Have the video, and by that I mean the actual PowerPoint for you to go through and click these links. Have the, um, the video of the presentation go out to everybody and then share out any questions that are asked as part of this part of the process in like a frequently asked questions document so that it has what other people have asked me or things that people are curious about, okay? So uh, for the folks at home, um, I really appreciate you guys being here and, and jumping on. Uh, at this point, again, I would ask for uh, Mr. Bennett to, to leave this Q QR code up for a little bit longer. Um, if you have individual personal education or personal questions about your child and your situation, I would ask that you reach out to myself, 
uh, the counselor, Mr. Bendit, if you're part of the class of 2023, so that we can get those individual questions answered. And then please put any questions that you have, use this QR code and get them to me because I'm sure that other people have similar questions if they're not specific to your child that we can answer and get out for everybody's benefit. So again, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much and take care.